Hey everybody, it's Chris. Today we are going to look at episode 5 of the sci-fi original Deadly Class. This is one of the most important, if not the most important episodes of the season, so let's just jump in and take a look. If this is your first time here, I take TV shows and movies based on books and compare and contrast them to the source material. Oh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos and click that notification icon to join the notification squad, as it were, and be the first to know when something new drops. So just a quick warning here, since I do take the TV show and the source material and contrast them, there is a chance that I might uh, convey some information that is spoilery in its nature. If that is a problem for you, go ahead and turn this off. And you could always come back and watch these videos after the season is done. Okay, with that out of the way, I think it's time to just jump in and get this thing going. First up, we have Rory Returns. So this is just a quick one and not really connected to anything, but the hippie who sold them the good acid and the bald gambler are the same actor who played Rory in the opening episodes. I love the actor Ryan Robbins uh, ever since seeing him on Sanctuary, so I hope he keeps popping up in the show as it goes on and it's kind of an Easter egg. That's just exceptionally cool and obviously not something from the comic. Okay, next up, let's look at The Strip. I mean, holy crap, this was one of the most visually amazing sequences I have seen in a long, long time. and perfectly captures and expands on even what we see in the comic. Uh, there are some people who are complaining that the show is too faithful to the source material. And in some instances, you know, I can see where they're coming from, but this sequence in particular is pretty spectacular evidence where they have stayed true to the essence of the comic while expanding it and making it so much better. So bravo writers and visual artists uh, on that sequence. Okay, next we're going to look at Billy's dad. So this was similar and different at the same time. Things unfold almost exactly as we have in the comics, right up until the time that Marcus enters the room and, you know, Billy asks for his help. In the comic, after his moment of indecision, Marcus picks up a heavy metal lamp and hits Billy's dad with it, ending his life. Uh, it is very much not an accident. And the whole thing takes just a few seconds. I don't, I don't really dig this as much as what we had in the comics, I'm not going to lie. It makes it seem like Marcus is less of a killer than he was in the comics. It felt like a moment where you saw for the first time how his time at King's Dominion was changing him and not for the better. So it's a little weird that we lost that in the show. What I did love, though, about the changes they made to the scene uh, had to do with the aftermath. Again, it was very brief in the comics with Billy basically just screaming at him, you know, why couldn't you love me? Which is heartbreaking, but the way it was played out in the show had so much more impact. Uh, so, you know, some stuff I didn't dig and some stuff I did. Okay, next up we have Master Lin. I, I loved this. It was new for the show and made a certain amount of sense uh, that while tripping out as hard as he was, Marcus would see the current authority figure and, you know, almost surrogate father in his life, which was Master Lin, that the disapproving glances and comments were perfect. And I really love how they played with it. It wasn't really until the end that you were 100% sure that he wasn't there, which was perfect for the tone of this episode. Next up, we have The Elevator. This was new for the show and not a great addition, in my opinion. In the comic, uh, you don't see Chester until immediately after Chico's death, which we will go over uh, soon, obviously. And it's an important moment for all of them, not just Marcus. It also sets up a lot of what comes in the second arc of the comic, which will be much harder to get to now, I think. Okay, next up, we're going to look at Maria and Marcus. Man, this was so much better than what we have in the source material. Essentially, in the comic, he beats on the door, she lets him in, and they get right 
to the naughty times. I greatly prefer the way we see events play out in the show, with Maria and Marcus having a moment. Uh, I especially love that they have given Maria a more complex character, at least outwardly in the show. From the point she asks him about being laid on acid, the story progresses essentially the same as what we see in the comic. Okay, next up we have Chico and Marcus. This was mostly the same with a few exceptions. Uh, Marcus slashes Chico's chest with the glass shard, not his leg, which I think played out a lot better than what we have in the episode, as well as when he gets that hit in, Chico congratulates him for actually landing something on him, uh, which I thought was a nice touch that was missing from the episode. The other major change here, though, is that a couple of Renikoffs are the ones to draw down on Chico and not the store owner. Uh, events go the same way, though, with Chico turning the tables on them and dispatching them before turning to take care of Marcus. Uh, from that point on, uh, it's the same as what we see in the comic until we reach the moment that Maria takes matters into her own hands. Okay, next up we have, uh, obviously, Maria. One of the main differences between what we see in the comics and what we see on the screen is that after she attacks Chico, as he lays dying, she is overcome by the horror of what she has done and tells him she's sorry before she runs to Marcus. I really prefer the way it is played out in the show much better. With how badly Chico and his family have treated her, it is much more believable that she would shut herself off from what is happening, uh, whether she felt sorry or not, and run to Marcus. Her character in the comic always felt hollow to me, from you know a character development perspective. It was almost as if she was a MacGuffin, if you will, and not a real character. At least at this point in the story. So bravo writers for giving her character much needed depth and motivation. Okay, finally we're going to take a look at Chester. Uh, this was just all kinds of disappointing for me. In the comics, it is at this moment, when our heroes are all at their lowest, that Chester makes his first appearance. He has a whole monologue about what is coming, who he plans to be and how, ending with a warning to Marcus that he needs to work hard at school to become worthy of the epic showdown that's coming between them. Uh, he then grabs Chico's body and leaves, <laughs> suggesting he's going to feed Chico to an alley cat he finds on the way out. This is important for a number of reasons, not only because it is just you know, way better narratively than what we had in the show, but it means that they all know who has Chico's body and that it could come back to bite all of them later, which sets off an entirely new storyline in the second volume of the comic. I realize that they are moving things around in how they tell the story in the show, but this just seems wrong to me. I mean, they could do something, you know, like have Chester send them pictures or videotapes uh, of himself with Chico's body, but that seems like a serious contrivance when they could have just kept things as they were in the comic and it would have been, you know, fine. Okay, that's it for me. Uh, this was another spectacular episode, probably the most important one of the season, as I said before at the beginning, and it is a watershed moment for our plucky heroes, and uh, nothing, nothing will be the same after this. Yeah, so that's it for me. I will see you guys in the next video, but before I go, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I won't hold it against you. Uh, it's a free internet. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comments, and I will see you guys again in the next video. Take it easy.